Ok, sì. Ok, sta good registrando. Morning. Sta registrando bene. Good morning, students. Good morning, Vittorio. I uh, hope that uh, you are doing well. Um, I would like to introduce uh, uh, you, Professor Vittorio Zaccaria, who will be uh, the teacher for the next lesson about uh, front end technology. With Professor Zaccaria, we share the course. Uh, um, really in equal parts uh, in the past. Uh, for this year, you can only um, they devote uh, a little portion of, um, uh, of his um, uh, educational duties to this course, but that's very, very valuable. So thank you, Vittorio, for, for, giving, um, for giving these lectures on backend technologies. Uh, I, I'm sure you will enjoy his, his so he's an extremely com competent person and uh, a fantastic, uh, a fantastic teacher. Thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> no, that is true. It's a, it's a long term collaboration. So uh, thank you. Thank we you. will miss you next year that uh, when you will not yeah, be able unfortunately. to. OK, um, any, uh, I would like just since there is a bit of confusion on the schedule, um, I just want to make a comment about the schedule. Uh, we are trying uh, the overarching goal is to give you as much uh, tutoring as possible. This means that uh, some tutoring is done during the course hours and some tutoring is doing in the afternoon or in other hours, uh, even outside the days of the course. So there was a bit of confusion yesterday because people did not realize that there was tutoring in the morning and in the afternoon. This part uh, is what happened in the afternoon. But all of you have received a, a beep message in which we told you which group had to go in the morning, which good group had to go in the afternoon for the tutor, with two different virtual rooms, uh, with two different doodles. So it's really complicated uh, to organize uh, a project course with 150 students uh, with more than 50 projects uh, and 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 making it a real project oriented course with tutoring with hands on. So please follow instruction carefully. So look at the, tu at the schedule. The schedule for today means that there is <coughs> Professor Zaccaria in the morning and there are some front end tutoring, not for all of you, for those who reserved a slot in, in the afternoon for this tutoring. In the same vein, on Friday, there is also front end tutoring in the afternoon only. So this column is afternoon, this column is morning. For a while, there will be a mix up of, of um, uh, lectures and front end and uh, tutoring. The lecture <coughs> will always happen in this virtual room. The tutoring is uh, in two uh, ad hoc created uh, virtual rooms. So Next Friday, similar pattern, front end tutoring in the morning and in the afternoon for those who registered for that tutoring. There will be Vittorio, Professor Zaccaria in the morning, and then will be another tutoring in the afternoon. The, only, the exception is uh, we, we take a break from tutoring uh, on Wednesday and Thursday, um, May 6 and May 7, in which there will be only back end technology lesson by Vittorio. But in the afternoon, in a day, uh, in an hour that uh, is, it hasn't been scheduled towards the end uh, of the afternoon uh, to to avoid overlapping with other other uh, lessons, I will discuss uh, the evaluation of your usability deliverable, which means that you will get the evaluation approximately this week. You will get the scores, the commented scores, and those of you who want to discuss <coughs> can meet me. Uh, during the afternoon uh, to, to discuss uh, their evaluation and to cl have clarification about the dubs. Then the, the, the lesson, there will be no more lesson after May 7th, and then there will be front-end and back-end tutoring in the morning on the afternoon, and you will receive uh, doodles and precise schedules as, so, as, as soon as possible. Um, tutoring will always be for technology tutoring, so for this part and for this part. All, all technology tutoring will be held in two separate rooms. The one say set up by Mattia, the other one set up by Francesco. Instead, uh, this uh, um, discussion about usability deliverable 
or design deliverable, this will happen in the regular course virtual room. But you will receive messages about that, so please check messages. We try to be as clear as possible in our messages. Still, we understand that there are some misunderstandings. If anything is not clear, please contact us. The final comment I want to do, I still have to manage some, some of the emails received from you about uh, mm, the project, the design project. There are still, still some students who, say, who is sending me some doubts. I will be able to, to answer till um, the next, I will answer the uh, mails that I have already received in a couple of hours. Then I won't be able to answer any more questions starting uh, after today noon. I mean, I hope that we have clarified all the possible questions during uh, uh, during our tutoring, but if you have uh, questions uh, or doubts, uh, write me a mail, but not later than this morning. The pending question will be answered today. Uh, it will be answered in a couple of hours. Uh, that's all. Uh, so, Vittorio, uh, I will return. Uh, I will return uh, the control to you. Thank you again uh, for being here. Okay, thank you. And uh, have a good lecture. And bye, students. Enjoy your lecture. Ciao, ciao, grazie. Thank you very much. Ciao. So, uh, hopefully... And, and Vittorio, remember to stop recording. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe if you want to make a break, that. stop recording. And, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, you're used to it. Okay. Yeah, my other course, yes, I have okay. had. Great. Ciao, ciao, grazie. Bye. Ciao, ciao, ciao. So um, thank you very much uh, for uh, having me here. Um, hopefully you can see uh, the screen with the uh, with the slides that I'm going to present. And uh, uh, as as Franca said, that during this lecture you will learn how to build and deploy your uh, web application into a real world. And uh, we will actually build the uh, server or your uh, web application. And and to do that we will. Uh, improve or you know um, learn a bit better our javascript skills that you already already uh, are seeing in, in in the front end technology part we're going to use javascript also for the uh, back end part and uh, you will experience with industrial platforms such as the roku and and specification languages for apis and in particular we are talking about open api and uh, um during this uh th this course you are going to really uh improve uh if um if it's nece it is necessary uh also your uh, uh, uh git um skills okay um we're talking about version control of source code and however we will not touch uh we will not deep dive into uh cloud computing and and distributed systems and 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 databases these are things that you are going probably to see in other uh courses where we are going to see only uh, the basics in these few lectures that are dedicated to building the server of your web application having said that uh, um the fact that we chose JavaScript also for uh, as a suggestion for the creation of the backend of your application, th this decision has been dictated by the fact that uh, you are currently uh, working with JavaScript and, and you shouldn't have to learn a new language from scratch. So, but before that, to get on the same page, it is important to really understand what we are going to build essentially and and in the following part we are um, really going to uh, overview some of the term terminology and and some history also of the uh, tools and 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 concepts that are related to the uh, development of the of a backend of a web application in 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 2012 let's say so a modern application so First of all, uh, let's uh, recap a little bit um, what we um, mean with the, the term service. Okay, a service is a software functionality that can be reused. Okay, so um, a service typically represents a business activity with a specified outcome, which can be any kind of artifact. 
it is typically self-contained and uh, assuming that someone is offering the service, you don't need anything else to really bring the activity to completion. And typically it's a black box for its uh, consumers and uh, they only know about the, the surface of the service. Okay. So in a service oriented architecture, uh, the service oriented architecture is it's the, the, the most used way to to build a client server application. So it's uh, in software engineering, we call it the reuse paradigm in disguise. And, and uh, applications are built by integrated uh, what uh, are the uh, existing services instead of writing them from scratch. However, let's start from a non-service oriented architecture. Uh, this kind of architecture for a client server application provides raw access to the resources with the few or really no application logic at all. So clients, the one that uh, the, 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 the people that you can see here on, on, the, on the left uh, contain all the application logic, which might be replicated across uh, them for common functionality. And, and of course, and they access uh, directly the database which contains all the uh, you know data associated with the application and this mm, having such a non-service oriented architecture means that uh, you have maintainability issues because for example changing the structure of the database might imply rewriting the the clients the the terminals here and which which do these SQL queries into the database. So whenever you change the structure of the database, you really need to, uh, you know, uh, change uh, all the applications that are running on the terminal. So, for example, if you consider a software uh, system that uh, manages a company uh, warehouse, so an, an order for from some product can be a complex view of uh, some uh, um, table here in the database, like for example, the inventory and, and the sales database, okay? So um, if, you, if you change the way in which the inventory and sales are, uh, are um, structured in the database, then also the, uh, the, 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 the order uh, associated with the product and, and all the uh, actions that must, uh, you know, create, view or manipulate the order have to be changed into the clients. So actually, it, it's uh, it's um, it's not the most efficient way of uh, doing things. Okay, so because the order, it's an it's an abstraction that is built above, you know, um, existing tables in the database and and and. Uh, uh, Essentially, it's used by all the uh, all the terminals or the clients. Then it should be somehow be uh, something which is a, a common thing among uh, uh, to be used by clients, and not something that uh, really every client should be by its by by itself. So. Um, in a service oriented architecture, you typically um, introduce a service layer, which here in this picture we have called the remote application uh, server, where the uh, common operations over the uh, the data have been extracted from from the clients, from the simple clients, and and they've been put into a single server functionality that is uh, reusable and uh, on demand by the client. And uh, mm, so, somehow we will see that uh, the, the most used way to interact with the, with the application server, especially in, in, in uh, the uh, web application domain, it's uh, to structure, to abstract all the resources um, um, that uh, you know are exposed by the by the by the by the server through a more or less object-oriented way, okay, where you can manipulate resources by, for example, creating them, updating them, 
uh, or, or or deleting them, for example. So uh, in this case, uh, of course, changing the structure of the database means rewriting only the remote application server. So if you change the inventory and sales uh, tables here, uh, you only need to change the remote application server to manipulate uh, the order that is uh, an abstraction built over the uh, inventory and sales. So um, clients typically are not impacted by any change and interact with it uh, through uh, an interface that does not expose the implementation of the um, um, of such uh, um, you know logic. So in a web application, essentially, the the application layer becomes the the browser so the clients become the the, the, the browser in, in in fact and the service service layer becomes the web server okay and the layer uh, interaction follows a recurring pattern that you can see in uh, in this picture uh, typically uh the 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 the, the, uh, the the, the browser must uh, render the um, the graphical interface and must for, first of all access and and read all the assets that are needed for uh, you know uh, rendering it so HTML CSS and JavaScript and then after the uh, page has been rendered in a typical application which uh, you know uh, builds uh, its uh, views uh, dynamically the uh, second part of the interaction is uh, uh, we can say that it's built by uh, um, with requests that uh, uh, access resource data and uh, render the uh, this resource data in in the in the graphical interface. So um, and and uh, we were, we're going to see that. Uh, this interaction is, uh, you know, uh, follows some, uh, you know, well-known protocols, uh, which uh, are, um, the, the most important one is HTTP. Okay, so it's it's a protocol, a connection protocol, for uh, you know, uh, you know, um, sending requests for resources over the the network and and getting a textual representation of those resources back and as a resource we uh, we mean uh, you know html files css javascript and and, and all the data that is a uh, raw data that is associated with resources that must be rendered on the on the graphical uh, user interface and um, uh, by the way if you have any questions just feel free to you know, raise a hand in the chat, and uh, and uh, I will give you the the mic so you can ask. Uh, but hopefully, so far it's really a very uh, you know high level introduction to what we mean with the you know web application and how it's really built from the ground up. So um, typically, the um, the messages that you see here, the one that uh, you know uh, are done to uh, you know ask for uh, resource data, uh, and 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 after that they are rendered by the browser. This this uh, um, these calls to the web server are uh, done through a series of messages to the web API exposed by the uh, by the server okay and in this course we're going to build from uh, more or less from scratch we're going to use some tools to do that uh, a little bit more comfortably but uh, uh, we're going to see how to implement a web api uh, so um, a server with a web api that uh, you know allows the the clients to uh, access not only html css and javascript but also the data that has, that is associated with resources that must be uh, rendered on the uh, on the client and uh, 
so a picture that uh, you know maybe it's uh, it's worth a thousand word uh, of a web application of a you know very uh, simple web application. As I said before, we're not going to to deal with the complex infrastructure that are used today for you know um, implementing a, um, a you know a production grade. Uh, uh, application. We're talking about this, the, the the skeleton that is behind any any web application. So uh, it, you expect to really find you know applications that are much more complex than this. But let, let's start, let's start from the basics. So the one that you can see here it's really something uh, uh, of a skeleton of a web application where where you have. Um, uh, the browser seen as a you know um, green box here, and and the browser accesses both the uh, static resources, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. These are not, as I said before, these are not mean, meant to change over time, or at least they change with a very uh, you know small uh, uh, frequency update. And then you have um, um, instead the uh, Web API, which here is, um, if I may uh, zoom in, it's called REST API. This API, it's uh, uh, it's it's an interface uh, which exposes uh, the uh, resources to the browser. Okay, resources that may be any application level resource. So if you're managing a, uh, for example, a a company warehouse, for example. Um, this API could expose uh, data associated with, uh, you know, uh, the the inventory, with the with the sales, with the orders, and and so on. And and an API means that you you send messages to uh, to ask for data to this to this interface or to manipulate some data from the browser. The uh, this interface uh, behind works with the application server which uh, it's uh, essentially it's the it's the main process that uh, you know serves all the requests to the to the resources and uh, uh, this application server will have um, will need uh, a kind of you know a database system to manage the uh, the data um, the data associated with the application so the, the the first two components here are meant to be really something like you know receive and interpret messages that are then you know converted into a series of operation towards the database and uh, in this course we have uh, we, we're going to see a way to specific specify um uh rigidly this api and to uh, really generate from uh, from a skeleton of the application server um, that then we can modify to implement our application. But let's uh, keep this for for the next uh, uh, lectures. Anyhow, um, any application, uh, any any API, and here I've, I've used the term REST, which is a, an acronym that we're going to um, really uh, um here a lot of times in this course um so, but to to understand what it means uh, uh, we have to be clear on the fact that any web api that uh, uses http http as a protocol um to manipulate a resource is said to be uh, compliant with the representational state transfer rest uh, principle and uh, what does it mean? It means that there is a, um, uh, let's say, um, any resource that you um, manipulate uh, within your application uh, is exposed to the browser with a textual representation. Okay. And, and the application works by manipulating this textual representation. And and that's why um, we call this uh, 
uh, th this way of managing things between the browser and the and the and the API, we call it representational state transfer. It's a you know uh, uh, mouthful uh, word, but uh, and 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 uh, we we need to to remember what it is. But we are going to really not de delve into the details of. Uh, the, uh, the 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 principles be behind it and uh, um, however uh, there might be different degrees with which a, a, an API is compliant with the this rest principle and uh, these are called uh, uh, these these levels are called the um, um, uh, research on maturity model. This is something that you're going probably to see in other courses. And uh, we are going to uh, use the level two, which is use the full power of verbs to manipulate resources. OK, and in the few. Uh, in the few lecture that we're going to to see, we're going to see what it means to really use HTTP verbs to manip manipulate resources. We first have to understand what does it mean to have an HTTP verb in place to do things. And uh, and so we are going to deal a little bit into what uh, HTTP offers to manipulate resources. So, um, um, uh, as a bit of you know um, contextual uh, information, the the most mature is level three, and uh, typically uh, I don't know of any applications, modern application which is fully compliant with the with the level three. Uh, so far, only the, the current applications uh, that you can see uh, that you know more or less follow the, 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 the rest principles are all uh, mm, at the level two. But if you if you find something that which is at the level three, I will uh, really, you know, uh, be uh, uh, interested into into knowing what it is. So I'm not going into the details of this stuff because in the past years, uh, uh, these are uh, have been uh, uh, some somewhat uh, a source of uh, confusion, but this is just to give a contextual information about the uh, the, the modern uh, web servers and what are the principles with which they have been they are built. So, um, as I said before, we're going to use uh, you know HTTP to manipulate resources over the uh, onto the uh, into the application. Okay, so the application provides this abstract view of resources, which are meant to be application level, um, you know, uh, objects. So uh, I don't know what is the uh, the current. Uh, um, uh, project um, um, domain that you are, have to really build for uh, this year. So uh, you might think of it, for example, last year it was a bookstore. And um, last year all students had somehow to, um, you know, manipulate resources, create a web server that uh, provided uh, an interface to resources which were uh, a book or an author or uh, or um, a genre or uh, every every application level concept that you can think of might be somehow uh, casted into a resource. So um, resource manipulation. So when we, we our web application is going to expose resources to the uh, through the HTTP protocol. So it is really best to uh, get a good uh, grasp of, of it. So HTTP, of course, it's a communication protocol. And uh, so this means that uh, it's a system of rules that uh, specify uh, how to request a resource and, and uh, how uh, mm, the response should be, should be formed. So it's a kind of message uh, negotiation and, and transmission protocol. And uh, 
so uh, and this is built over TCP, which is an underlying protocol which uh, uh, you know um, encapsulate, encapsulates somewhat the HTTP requests. So this this is only just to show you that um, HTTP means you know um, a certain series of messages that are sent by the browser to the server and how they have to be really um, formed in order to be compliant with a certain to be understood by the web server and so on. It's a kind of contract between the browser and the server. Okay. So. Um, much of the uh, yes uh, question we have to make a web application for a voluntary associated with our services events and people and that's that's pretty much it the, the, the description of uh, resources uh, that uh, your application will have to provide so um, um, we're going to see how services events and people might be um, um, uh, Casted into a into a uh, you know resource that can be manipulated from the client to um, into the server. And uh, first of all, we <clears throat> we need to um, understand what are the core set of principles that uh, uh, are needed to manipulate resources over uh, HTTP. So um, all resources must have uh, uh, an, uh, an identifier, which is uh, called as also a uh, uniform resource identifier. And it, it is a unique, unique textual description associated with the, with the resource. And we're going to see some examples now, don't worry. Um, and and uh, a resource also has a, a state with a representation, which is a textual description of the actual state of the resource. OK, so just as a short overview, whenever you access a resource from the browser, uh, the browser is, is going to send a request that will, uh, for example, if you want to view the state of a resource, the, um, the browser is going to send a request for, you know, getting the textual representation of that resource, okay, uh, of the state of that resource, the current state of that resource. That that those are pretty much the um, the, the things that uh, we need for for accessing the uh, the resource state. And uh, the path component here uh, is important uh, as it allows to structure hierarchically the application objects. For example, <clears throat> um, the slash paths here, uh, it's, it's, a, it's the path component of an application that uh, we assume have to be uh, a pet store, for example. So uh, in, in this application, the slash paths um, um, means that uh, we want to access the list of pets, the complete list of pets that uh, uh, are uh, uh, stored in the database. OK, so this path here, it's very important because uh, depending on the path, we have to choose whether um, we want to access a certain you know, set of resources or another. And uh, it might uh, hierarchically uh, also use to uh, select a, a subset or a single element of uh, this collection here by using an additional component of the path. For example, slash pet slash 43 means I want to really uh, read the state of the pet number 43 from uh, uh, from this, uh, uh, you know, collection of uh, of pets. So this is uh, actually this is very uh, can be you know very. Mm, it's a component of the resource identifier which can be very 
which can be structured. Um, the, 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 the set of principles that we are, um, you know, uh, seeing uh, in these courses, however, um, suggest to really not increase so much, too much the hierarchical depth of the resources that, uh, or, or that we, the high, the hierarchical depth of the, um, of the path component. However, you know, um, having a path for with which we can, uh, you know, uh, ask for a certain collection or a sub collection or a single element, it's fine, like in this case. So uh, also the uh, here you can see a path which is called query, which is uh, an optional path, uh, an, op an optional component of the um, resource identification. And this is very important also because it allows to uh, uh, you know specify um, a sub collection, uh, for example, uh, slash pets question mark from three uh, to uh, ten means that we want to access the uh, pets um, collection of our pet store from the uh, pet number three to the pet number 10. So the query parameter means that uh, it, it's a way of, you know, uh, changing uh, the, 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 the way in which we want to access resources, uh, changing the size or, you know, even selecting whether some uh, for some pets that have the, for example, the, the uh, some a certain color, you can everything can be specified into this path component. And for those of you who are very into database management, and uh, this means uh, this is uh, you know the, the, the could be uh, thought of as the um, where. Um, uh, close of a SQL query statement. But for those of you who are not into databases, we're going to see this later on. So, um, let's uh, let's see how a request for a resource is built with a, with a real, real example. Here, we're going to see, uh, here you can see a, a, a request which is the textual, uh, you know, um, content of a request that is sent by a browser to the server to access a certain resources. And um, here, for example, we see that the resource has a first line, which is composed of, uh, you know, the first uh, word, it's, uh, it's called the HTTP verb. And uh, the verb means the action that we want to perform into the um into our uh, to our resource for example in this case we want to get the textual representation of the resource so we want to let's say get the content of the file and the resource here is represented with its uh, you know uh, um, path okay this is the resource path and in this case here, we are accessing a resource that is an HTML file, which uh, it's uh, hierarchically stored under the uh, docs component. And uh, the request, uh, it's also uh, completed with the, you know, the version of the protocol. This is something which is not important for us. I mean, um, it's it's always there. It, this is this is a request that is generated by the by the browser. So it's not that you have to generate this request from scratch. You have all the in, let's say the, um, the 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 tools to to make the browser generate those from for you. And then we have the second line, uh, which is the uh, the the host. If you remember the um, uh, that this is the, the the first part of the uh, of the URI component, and then 
there are other um, let's say information which are associated with the way in which we want to uh, you know uh, which we can accept as a representation of the resource in this case uh, um, this is called the media type okay uh, we can optionally specify that we want the uh, you know uh, the resource representation encoded with compression and then we can also specify other things okay but the most important thing which here it's only represented with optional body it's uh, something which is uh, not optional whenever you want to perform uh, something more than a get of a request and uh, you can have also other three main HTTP verbs here. OK, the first is get. So you, with a get, you request a copy of a resource. And, um, and typically remember that when you do a get, when the browser does a get towards a web server, this might be uh, cached along the way. So you might not get with a get, sorry for the uh, word uh, joke, but uh, you cannot get with a get. Uh, you cannot expect to have always the, the latest, uh, uh, you know, uh, update on that resource. Typically get, get only the latest cache, cache the value of that resource uh, along the along the way of the request that you know goes from the browser into the server and we we know that uh, there are several intermediate uh, you know uh, servers that uh, might be used for caching that resource for you know sp speed reasons for example the other three components that I was talking about uh, the other three verbs that I was talking about are uh, post which, which is generally uh, used to create a resource and uh, a post verb might uh, have side effects in the sense that for example when I do a post over an HTTP request this might change the state of the server so we are going to change the state of the table tables of the server with a post and you use it typically for creating new uh, new resources. So, for example, uh, you will do a post whenever you will want to create a new pet into the pet store database. And typically, uh, we talk about having side effects or not for each request. And uh, post has a side effect, while get doesn't. And um, we also talk about being uh, uh, a request being uh, idempotent. Okay, uh, an idempotent request means that uh, if you make the request twice, okay, um, uh, the resource the, 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 it's the same as a, uh, a single request. So, for example, if you. So the, the side effect of a post, there is a question over the chat. The side effect of a post means that uh, um, you are changing the values of the data stored into the database. Okay, this is one example of having side effects of a post. So that this means that uh, uh, for example, in your application domain, which is the voluntary association that uh, has services or events or people, you will do a post for creating a new service or a new event or a new uh, person, a new um, yes um, element of the people set of resources. So whenever you want to create a new resource over the server, you will do from the browser a post request. A post changes something in the application. 
okay. while uh, uh, the, 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 the get uh, request doesn't. It doesn't change the tables of the um, of the database of your application, and that's why you could think about you know. Um, okay, so the, the second question is: uh, Can it be done by the end user or just uh, the DB manager? It depends, in the sense that uh, uh, typically it depends on the fact whether you uh, allow the uh, web application to create uh, objects, to create resources in the database, okay? So in principle, your application could be something which only, you know, um, uh, views data stored into the server and doesn't change it. And in that case, the, uh, the creation of, uh, uh, of resources must be done by the database manager, of course. But in the case where you have an application, for example, and that depends on your uh, constraints, on, your, on, on the specification of your application. In the case where your application is, uh, can, you know, sh can provide, should provide to the user a way to create new resources, then uh, the, uh, the requests that the uh, browser running your web application will do are uh, post requests. So uh, it depends on 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 the on the on the specification of your application. That's why it's it's up to you to decide whether to allow the client to to um, create resources or not, and 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 it's up to you and and your application. Um, just as another example, whenever you uh, f mm, in a web application fill up a form. OK, uh, uh, that data is sent to the um, to the um, to the server, which might optionally, you know, uh, you know, uh, save that data or, or do something uh, which has a side effect with that data. And then you use a post for a for a form that is uh, compiled uh, from a user into um, in, on, of the web application. So a form typically it's, it's, it can be seen as a message which is then stored into a you know, list of messages stored into in the database. So it's a way of you know, having a, uh, an effectful, a side effectful um, operation into, into the database. So the other two uh, verbs that we're going to, to, to see in this overview of what we can do with resources are the put operation, which uh, replaces an existing resource or, or changes it. So if you want to change something which uh, has been already created into, uh, in, the data, uh, in the database, uh, then you would use a put. And uh, if you want to destroy an a, a resource, we want to delete it, you would use a delete uh, verb. So these are the four verbs that uh, uh, can be used in an application. Just to, to have an example of what we mean uh, with that, uh, let us see uh, the, the, let's say the, the, the the possible requests that uh, could be accepted accepted by a web server that manages a pet store application. So get pets, we have already seen get slash pets, there is a typo here, uh, retrieves a list of pets, okay. We, we call this operation safe because uh, this doesn't have any uh, side effect into the server. This doesn't change the web server, the, the, the data associated with the web server. And, and the same is for get slash pet uh, slash uh, 12, which retrieves data associated with a specific pet. Also, in this case, you don't change the, um, 
the data associated with the application. There is another column here which is called ID, which, which stands for item potent. Having an item potent uh, uh, operation means that uh, uh, making two requests, it's the same as uh, making one request. It doesn't change. The data doesn't change from one request to another. So if you do two times a get uh, pets, since it doesn't change the uh, the state of the um, of the data in the server, if you do it a second time, you get the same data. That's pretty much it. So this means that it is item potent. However. If we want to create a new pattern, so if your application allows the uh, the user to create the, the the end user to create a new pet from its interface, your uh, your browser will do a post to the slash pets collection. Okay. Uh, another question, uh, but if in the meanwhile the resource changes, I get different data between two gets. I mean, yes. So. We, we talk about the idem potency only between two uh, consecutive requests. Of course, if you have uh, 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 something in the middle, then that can change the, um, the, uh, the, 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 the data, then you would have an, a second, uh, the second request, which is not really equal to the first one. But if you assume that there are no intermediate uh, you know, um, requests between one and the other, then item potency applies for the get. So, um, typically, this is in, in real application, since you, you have um, um, resource data that might be cached along the way, uh, within the path that goes from the browser to the server, you might have a situation where you uh, really don't get with a, with a get the latest version of the resource because caching must be updated with policies that we are not going to see in this course and uh, are out of the scope. But just to, to give you an idea, the fact that uh, these operations are uh, you know safe and item potent means that somehow they are not required to really have access to the latest version uh, of the resource. This is not mandatory from the point of view of the uh, specification of the get operation. And that's why you see somehow you probably have been quoted in some uh, cases where uh, you have updated a resource, but you don't see even if you do multiple requests, even you don't do you don't see the latest one. That's because of the principles that are behind the, the, the how the HTTP GET are managed within the complex, you know, web application um, scenario. But let's close this parenthesis because I don't want to go into the details of, uh, you know, these kind of things. Just to give you an idea of uh, how to use these uh, verbs when managing remotely the resources that are stored in the server. So as I said before, uh, POST means creating something you on the server. It's not safe because uh, if you do a GET later, uh, the, uh, it, it, this is a side effect on the state of the, um, of the server. And it is not that important because if I do uh, two POST requests, I create two, uh, two new objects. Uh, so, for example, uh, whenever you do, a, you know, credit card transaction, you uh, th this transaction from the uh, from the client are uh, done through uh, a post uh, operation, okay, or post request. And uh, if, for example, if you go back with your you know, with your browser. Uh, I assume that everybody uh, has seen the message that don't go back when you're doing a transaction because you might, uh, you know, do another time the post request so you could produce two transactions instead of one. 
So uh, this means that this is not safe and it's not idempotent. important. OK. Um, put means updating a certain object, a certain resource here. We are updating uh, the pet uh, number 12. And it's uh, uh, not safe, of course, but in, it is meant to be um, idempotent. important. So two put requests must be must have the same effect as one. Uh, patch is something which is uh, you know uh, mm, it's something that is uh, that is less often used, and it's done to to do it's used to do partial updates on a certain pet. But we're going not going to really use this kind of uh, you know verb HTTP verb for uh, managing resources. While delete it's used for deleting a pet. Now before going into um, the uh, uh, really uh, short demonstration of what we mean with uh, this. Um, well, actually, uh, if you do two times a delete of the same object, uh, it's the same of, uh, uh, as you did one one um, one delete. The effect is always to to remove uh, an object from the data database. So if the object is not there, then uh, the delete is, is successfully completed. You, you're not deleting two times. The, the, the idempotency means that uh, if you do a delete of path 12, and so the first delete that removes the, uh, the object 12 from the, from the uh, database, the second delete, uh, since the object is uh, not there anymore, it's completed by uh, by default. So it's it's successful by by default. So it doesn't um, you know do any other thing that uh, you know having having removed uh, that that object from the database. So because it's already removed, it's it's uh, um, it's already completed somehow. Probably. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit, you know, uh, cumbersome, but uh, to, to think about it, I, I understand. But in, in fact, it means that, uh, yeah, to ensure that this operation is important, of course, when you delete pet number 12, uh, you, uh, you have to be sure that uh, nothing else becomes the Mm, there is no mm, no pet in the database that changes its status to, to twelve. For example, if you update the uh, indexes of the of the pets in the database, uh, then this might be a problem because uh, if you remove pet number twelve, if something else becomes pet number twelve. Then the second delete can uh, de deletes another pet, of course. So these are uh, you know constraints that. Uh, must also be taken care of uh, by uh, the way in which you uh, manage these requests. So to be the important, you must not really update the indexes of your database. Um, OK, one other thing that uh, I would like to uh, underline uh, before going into a really uh, short you know, demonstration of how this, uh, you know, a, a specific example of uh, API works uh, is the following. So the get operation here, this operation here, they uh, might uh, be sent to the uh, to the server. Um, to, just one second and answer to the to the question to the uh, into the chat. Um, what I was saying is that uh, the the get uh, doesn't uh, need to be a request that has a, a body within it, a, a body that specifies additional information. So, for example, let me let me just go back into the 
previous, uh, you know, uh, get request. Here you can see that there is uh, the, you know, uh, an optional body, which is a space in the textual request that is left uh, uh, blank. Okay. And, and for a get, this is pretty much it, in the sense that uh, all, pretty much all get requests are, uh, you know, typically sent with an optional body, which is blank. However, there are uh, the other, uh, you know, um, the other uh, operations that uh, are sent to the um, to the server. The other ver ver verbs that can be used for a request to the server might have uh, a, a body which is not uh, blank, which is, uh, for example, uh, filled up with information associated with that action. For example, the post uh, typically has as a body the content of the data of the object we are creating. In this case, the post pets will have a body which uh, has the data associated with the um, with the pet we are creating, the name, uh, the color, and so on. And uh, this textual description might have you know, several uh, ways of being uh, uh, structured. And uh, the current practices are to use a certain uh, language, let's say, to specify data. It's a data language, it's not a programming language, which is called uh, JSON. It stands for JavaScript Object Notation, and it's probably known by most of you, but uh, uh, don't worry if you uh, never heard about it. Um, the other possible way to structure this information into a request, it's the XML um, uh, language. And uh, it's not something which has been, uh, which is, you know, used uh, often uh, when, when building a web API. So we are going to stick with the current practices of, uh, um, you know, uh, structure inf information associated with a request uh, by using JSON as well. And uh, I'm going to answer to the question on the chat. Is there a way to retrieve deleted information? Is there a backup system also in this architecture? I mean, the, 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 the skeleton that I've shown to, to you, it's, um, it's very simple. It's the most basic one. And, uh, and of course, you could, in principle, having some kind of uh, uh, backup or, or, or something uh, that allows you to roll back the, uh, the operations that have been done by a user. However, uh, concerning the delete operation, it's, uh, it, it seems like uh, you know, a, an intentional uh, request from, from, the, from the browser. So, uh, if a user it's allowed to, uh, and, and this is a big if, of course, but if the user it's allowed to delete something, uh, then um, yeah, you could have a backup, but uh, it, it becomes really um, cumbersome to really have something which uh, uh, covers intentional deletes of objects. Of course, you could have a backup because uh, you might think about something going wrong in the database. So uh, th that could be a reason for which you you create uh, you create a backup. But when a user yeah uh, deletes something, it's intentional. So mm, yeah, you could have uh, some rollback application implemented into the uh, into the API, but it, this is not really uh, specified in the HTTP uh, protocol itself. So, but as you can see, these are very general uh, concepts which might be uh, applied to any specific uh, application scenario. So, um, it, it's it's only meant to really give you the basics. So, but you can see, could think of, and several of the students of the past year have uh, you know extended the um, the structure of the web application to 
uh, with, with, with several other additional components. But for the moment, I would like to give you the, the most basic uh, things that uh, we, we expect from, uh, uh, from you, from the web application that you are going to build. And uh, just to, uh, you know, since we are going to, we are moving towards the, the end of the introduction to, um, to the web API, I would like to show you uh, what does it mean to really interact with a uh, w existing web API. Okay, so in the past days, I had I have uh, asked you to, uh, as if you have seen my message on Beep, to install uh, a few tools on your machine just to get started with the with the creation of the uh, of the server. And uh, one of the tool was uh, Carl, which is uh, and then I let me just switch uh, screen uh, tor towards the um, okay. So um, now what you're seeing is the terminal uh, running on my machine and I'm going to use the terminal now to interact with uh, some existing uh, web APIs that are um, you know on the web essentially these are not running on my machine these are existing APIs and uh, I will show you uh, what does it mean to um, to access uh, to do requests over those APIs and, and, and what re results we can get back. For those of you that, uh, let me change again, sorry, the um, screen share. Um, um, for those of you who want to uh, try a little bit with this API, um, I'm going to use the uh, Skills API, which is uh, an API that is uh, um, that is uh, used for uh, you know accessing data associated to description of jobs, skills, and so on. And it's a you know very simple API. You could you could check. Uh, there is a link in the slides that uh, Frank has put online over Beep, and uh, but as you can you can see it also here, which describes the uh, the API. So what kind of uh, uh, requests we can do towards this API? Now, just to be clear. Uh, now we are going to use a tool which is a common line tool which is not a browser of course and um, so because we, i want you to show what the, what are the underlying uh, so, so the, 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 the underlying concepts behind accessing an api uh, today or probably next week if we have the time I'm going to show you how to do this from the uh, web browser, from the application in the web browser. But for the moment, uh, let me uh, just uh, show it to you uh, by using the command line terminal. So first of all, um, there is a request from uh, Massimiliano Roccamena, uh, I see on, uh, so the, why, Massimiliano, why, why you want to ask for um, the, the presentation uh, privilege? Okay, so um, so let's first see how can we perform perform a get operation and, and what are the results of uh, uh, this operation uh, towards this API. 
this is an exam example uh, request of a resource, which is uh, uh, the uh, a get re uh, request. I'm going to use the curl tool to do uh, this, uh, this request, and I'm going to specify with minus x that I want to do a get request. Okay. And uh, I'm going to specify the complete URI of the uh, resource, which is uh, data at work.org. Okay. Uh, slash v1 slash jobs. Okay. This is uh, something uh, uh, I'm asking for the set of uh, uh, job descriptions that are stored in the uh, in the database of this uh, web server and I'm going to do it directly. I'm using minus V now to show the um, also the the operation that the that the command does towards the uh, the web server. Now, if I press enter, I see a lot of things which uh, are pretty much, um, however, uh, interesting. So uh, the first thing that you do, the, 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 the actual request is the one that is done, uh, that, has, uh, that has the symbol here, the, the greater uh, symbol here on the on the left. And so, as you can see, the request that has been sent to the server is a, a get towards the path v1 jobs. v1, v2, v3, these are versions of the API. This might be used for you know, providing several APIs at the same time. This is not really something important for us. The, the, the thing that we want to really um, check out is that uh, yeah we were going to access the jobs uh, resources and uh, there is uh, the host is the one that I specified and here you can see the responses the response of the server the server answered with uh, you know still using our same the same version of the protocol not really important for us um, and with a 200 okay this means that the the, the request has been successful. Here you can see a lot more data that we are not going to check out now, but uh, the textual representation of the resource um, is sent back from the server uh, in the JSON format. And the JSON format, it's uh, the data associated with the, with the, 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 the resources is the one that follows. These are all the data. This is all the data associated with the resources. Now, since this is very cumbersome to read, uh, I use the uh, JQ tool to uh, um, uh, pretty print the data uh, and, and show it uh, better. This is the data associated with the same re request, but now this uh, that has been pretty printed. And uh, as you can see, the resource, uh, um, that the set of resources that we are going to access have the following representation. It is an array of objects, those that are uh, uh, indicated by curly braces, and each of these objects following the JSON notation has a field that is the uh, identifier of the resource, which is a unique identifier. It has a title and uh, it, is, it has other, uh, you know, um, um, information that for, for us are really um, something which uh, might be or be not interesting. Uh, this is the norm normalized job title and the parent UID. There is a there is a kind of a hierarchical structure between uh, jobs that are that is described in the API that we are not going to really delve into. But this is just to show you what is the result of the request done um, to um, uh, towards the API. Okay, so you you can see a list here. 
So we ask it for jobs uh, with a um, uh, with a, we, without any or any query modifier, okay. And as a matter of fact, this corresponds only to the first twenty jobs in the database. This is not going to return all the objects in the database. Uh, we can modify this behavior by using the uh, query data, uh, the query component of the request, for example. If you remember, we can use the query component with the, uh, the, the list view. I, I've used the JQ tool, which is uh, the one. Uh, uh, I mean, the list view, it's already contained in the request. It's not something that I created. I just, I just pretty printed it. And if you go back and see the, the, the JSON representation here without any pretty printing. Uh, you can see that there is, uh, this is uh, the same information, but it's all, uh, you know, in one line. JQ allows me to print this uh, much more beautifully in the sense that uh, it allows to really have a much clearer and less verbose uh, uh, print on the terminal. It's, it's just the same thing printed better. So, as I was saying before, um, and, and this is, uh, I'm just piping the uh, the output of the curl command in uh, uh, into uh, the uh, JQ uh, command. That's that's pretty much it without any intermediate file or, or anything else. I'm just, you know, piping this data into this prettifying command and uh, and uh, this just show, shows me the pretty print of the uh, return data. As I was saying before, the the um, the data returned by the by the by the server. It's not all the jobs in the database. It's just uh, the first uh, twenty jobs. If I want to uh, let's say uh, modify uh, the way in which uh, I want data to be returned. I can use the query parameter, which is the question mark, if you remember. And I can say, for example, that instead of having the first 20 jobs, I, will, I want only two of the first. And I can use, this is described in the API, but uh, just to show you how the query components are, uh, uh, are used, I can use, for example, question mark limit equal to, and this returns only two of the first objects, resources in the database. Okay. Now, um, um, in principle, you can also specify other um, other query. Here are the the example returned with the, with the, as an additional information in the in the response. For example. I can use also an offset to say that, for example, I want two objects starting from the second one, and I concatenate these two, uh, you know, query component with uh, an ampersand. And this that these are the second and third. So starting from the uh, from from sorry uh, from the uh, the third and the fourth one. So starting from the third one, um, um, objects in the um, in the uh, database. So here you can see all the requests that we can do. These are uh, links to other possible, uh, you know. Uh, mm, let's say, request that you can do. And we are not going to deal uh, with this additional information here, which is not required to be sent by your server. Uh, however, if it does, uh, it more or less complies with the Richardson maturity model, the third one, if I remember correctly, but let's stick with the second the, the, the second uh, level and, and, and go on. Just as another, um, uh, 
um, information that we can get uh, for, uh, for a single uh, job description. Let's take, for example, this, uh, this identifier here. So this identifier here, it's, uh, it's an identifier that I can use as a path component to get uh, information about a single uh, job description, which is, of course, only, only the, the description, one of the description that we've seen before. But interestingly, this API offers a way to, for example, uh, given a certain uh, resource like this one, uh, to access also related information by using an additional uh, uh, query, par uh, sorry, path parameter in this case, which is, for example, related jobs that gives me a list of jobs that are related to that specific um, um, resource. Okay. So as you can see, the related jobs associated with the um, with the original. I don't remember what was the name. It was uh, the okay. So if you remember, the job was was first pressman on web press, which I don't know what job it is. <laughs> And the and the related jobs are uh, all the ones that you can think of uh, associated with the, you know something that uh, imprints imprints uh, someone that imprints all, uh, anything on on on, uh, on paper or uh, or more. So you can structure uh, the the path components. Um, of the resources in order to get uh, uh, related information. Now, I would suggest you to really not um, abuse of the hierarchical way of uh, specifying, uh, uh, you know, uh, resource identifiers. Uh, so, while it is possible to really have additional path here, let it, okay, I want to get the uh, identifier three of the related jobs, etc. I will not suggest to go towards this path, just to really keep it um, really uh, keep a flat hierarchy of, of path names and, and do not really uh, go um, more in depth when defining your API. Uh, the other uh, so the question is: Does the query ID always work with the first attribute, or does the ID attribute need to have the specific name UUID? In this case, <clears throat> it depends on the API, of course. Uh, if you have a look at the API uh, specification, uh, the link that I've uh, put in the slides. Uh, uh, you will see that uh, the, 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 they, they tell that uh, if you want to access a specific resource, you have to use the UUID um, field that is returned by, uh, you know, associated with each, with each job. Having said that, it depends on the way in which you specify things. Of course, this identifier should be something that do not change over time. Okay. But having said that, uh, it depends on the on the way in which uh, the API has been specified. Um, we're going to see not today, but uh, in the uh, next uh, next uh, week, uh, um, a way of uh, specifying uh, declaratively the API um, through the open API um, you know language 
which is something which also the Skills API has, and we're going to really have a look at it next week, but which allows to us to really, uh, you know, start to, uh, you know, formalize what uh, our API should be in terms of what resources it, it exposes, what uh, what we can do with resources and so on. For the moment, I would like only to have a look uh, at the end, another uh, API um, um, feature, we can say of this, this API, this uh, job API, which is uh, uh, the related skills uh, path component associated with each job. For example, I'm using the same job uh, as before, and I'm asking not for related jobs, but related skills, with, which is something which is not a job, of course. A skill is not a job, it's, it's you know, a, a feature that who does the job must have. And if I ask for the uh, related skills associated with a certain job, I see another, a list of other objects which uh, have another structure. They have another identifier. Uh, they have a name, uh, type, and description, and uh, we know a normalized name, and importance, a level. I mean, it's all the information you expect to have uh, in um, uh, associated with with an object. In this case, with a resource, which is an abstract resource, because a skill it's something which is very abstract. Um, Nevertheless, uh, I mean, this is the structure that that it has. And uh, for example, we expect that uh, uh, if you if you if you check the the API, uh, and and uh, we are going to use uh, we are using now the uh, jobs path to access uh, related skills, but of course this API allows us to also access the skills. So if I do, for example, skills, and I put the skill UID here, I get the information associated with the, um, with the, uh, with that specific skill. And uh, this is all specified in, in the in the API spec, and uh, we're going to check how this is built next, uh, next week. <clears throat> and uh, that's, that's pretty much it. We're going to also see next week how to access this API from the browser, just as a first thing in order to show you how then your application could really access this API to, for example, render jobs um, uh, in the graphical interface. And then we're going to see how to specify our, our API, which is the API of your project uh, that you're going to deliver for uh, this course. Now, uh, I will stop the, uh, the lecture here, but I'm available for uh, for uh, questions uh, online if you need any you know additional uh, uh, information of what we've seen today so thank you very much and uh, see you next week then <laughs>